Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Leila. Today I'm gonna talk about things you need to know if you want to study in Sweden. I feel like I have studied forever at the university level. I have studied different subjects like political science, English, history and right now I'm doing my master's in computer science so I think I have some knowledge and some experience that I could share with you. This video will be suitable for anyone who wants to start studying in Sweden as an international student or as an exchange student or if you are just interested in how things work in Sweden, it's also for you. Before I start talking about my list, I just need to say that everything in this video is based on my own experience and on the experience that I've got from my university, it's Stockholm University. If you want to study at a different university in Sweden, uh, some things may differ because everything depends on your university, everything depends on your teacher or on the subject that you are studying. And the last thing. Uh, when I was preparing for this video, I have made a list and it became a very long list. So I decided to divide this video into two parts. This video is gonna be a part one where I talk about university and things around university. And my part two video is gonna be about some more practical things and tips that can be good to know. So I have had a too long intro, let's get started. Sweden has quite a flat hierarchy and it's also reflected in the academic world. So there is no need to call your teacher by his title, Mr. or Mrs. or Professor or Doctor or whatever, you can just call them by their name. And in the beginning it can be very strange and uncomfortable since in many other countries you are supposed to call your teacher by, by the title, but it's not necessary here in Sweden. I think that the only time we call someone by their titles is the royal family, I mean Swedish royal family. If you want to talk to or about the crown princess, uh, you should call her Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Victoria or Crown Princess Victoria and not just Victoria. One of the central part of Swedish higher education is group works. You will have them in all courses and you will not be able to avoid them. Never. Also, depending on the course, most probably you will be graded as a group and not individually. That's why it's in your interest to make all of this work, whether you like it or not. With these group works, you have an opportunity to get different perspectives on the same problem. You also get skills in how to delegate this work among each other, how to plan different stages of this project and how to make all of this work. It's a great way to learn how to collaborate with people, how to adjust to different personalities and uh, just how to talk to people and solve problems. In many countries, students usually have five or six courses at the same time and then they have like one exam week. In Sweden it's a bit different. In Sweden you study one subject at a time, sometimes two. Again, it depends on your course, on, it depends on your subject. But usually you study one course at a time and it lasts for five or six weeks approximately. And then at the end of the course you have a you have an exam. It's a great way to focus only on one subject and according to my friends who are international students here in Sweden, they think it's a very efficient way to learn something. So this part with the schedule leads us to another subject which is planning and self-studies. As I said, uh, in Sweden you study a course for five and six weeks 
and usually when you look at the schedule it looks like it's very empty because you have only probably two and three uh, lectures and then one or two seminars and it looks like the rest of the week you are free but usually it's not how it works in swedish universities you are expected to plan your studies and to dedicate the rest of the week to your self-studies and uh, when you are free on the schedule you are supposed to read the books read the literature prepare yourself for the seminars and work on the group work that I talked about earlier. So here I would suggest and advise strongly that if you don't like stressful situations, if you don't like doing things at the last minute, I would recommend looking at the course guide and course information well ahead of the time so you don't have any surprises in the last minute. Seminars is where students have the opportunity to speak their mind because seminars are all about arguments, discussions and critical thinking. If you have an opinion, you are allowed to express it. You are actually like you're very welcome to express your opinions and uh, if you want to question your student peer in a respectful way, you are allowed to do so because discussions are very open and very welcomed. If you want to question your teacher, your seminar teacher, or if you want to like argue with the teacher also in a respectful way, of course, uh, you are allowed to do so. Do you remember I was talking about the group work? So seminars is where you usually need to present your group work in front of your friends, in front of other students. And usually after these presentations, group presentations, the floor is usually open for additional discussion. And what is so interesting here is that teachers, like seminar teachers, are not the authority. The teachers do not act like they know everything in this world. And the teachers are there to teach something, to start the discussion, but also to learn something from the students. I think it's so cool that the teachers are not kind of, oh, I know everything, you know nothing, how can you know something, you are so young, you will never hear anything like this uh, at the seminars, well, probably in some kind of, like, situations, but I have never heard any teacher saying this, because they are so open to our opinions, to our discussions and to arguments and sometimes they be like, mm, oh wow, I never thought about it. It's a very nice way to think about something something. Examination is different in different universities. They take place at the end of the course. The general idea about the examination is to check your logical thinking, to check your critical thinking and to see that you can provide arguments in a good in a, and a concise way. In many courses you will also have something that is called take-home exam where you will be allowed to use all the literature that you used um, during the course, all the notes, all the books and probably videos or whatever you used but uh, usually uh, it's, it's the same thing, it's about the logical thinking and about the critical thinking and not about the facts, obviously because you can check them very easily in the book. But what I like most about the examination at the Swedish universities is that it's very flexible and if you fail an exam you will have an opportunity to retake it because life happens and sometimes you can fail exams been there done that <laughs> so yeah it's kind of flexible and in some courses in some universities you can write these exams until you pass it in some courses you will need to re-register on this or you need to wait until the next time but 
like it's so flexible that you don't even need to worry about this because even if you fail and you feel like you are uh, I don't want to take this course anymore I want to change it you can actually change the course Swedish universities are very flexible and if you have some kind of issues you can always find a solution and the teachers and the course administration is always very helpful when you just enter the academic world or if you are not uh, sure how to write academic texts if you are not sure how to present something present a paper in an academic way there is a help provided by the university uh, at a place called Sprogwerkstad. in english it's translated like the language workshop, some universities translate it into the academic language support or something like this. If you are not sure, you can just type it Sprogwerkstad in the search bar at your uni and you will find it. So what is Sprogwerkstad? As I said, sometimes it's not very easy to figure out how to write your papers and Sprogwerkstad usually can help you with this thing. They provide you some guidance and teach you how to write papers in an academic way. These Sprogwerkstads also usually have some kind of workshops where they will tell you how to plan your studies, how to plan your study week, how to find out and understand your own study technique, and what is now so relevant, workshops on how to study remotely, how to present a paper orally in a good and understandable way. So everything that is considered the academic writing, academic papers, academic presentation, it's the place where you can get the help. And it's, as I said, it exists at most universities and it's for free. All universities in Sweden have some kind of student unions. Even some faculties have their own faculty associations. And it's something that I recommend you to join. By becoming a member in the faculty association or student union, you usually get student discounts, which is very important when you're here in Sweden and when many things are expensive. What is also good about these associations is that usually they organize some social activities, some uh, evening pubs or even seminars on different subjects. To be honest, right now I don't know how it is with the social activities because of the corona, but in the pre-corona times it was a great way to make new friends, to meet new people, to make new co contacts and uh, usually these, like in these associations you, you have actually opportunity to be engaged in some kind of student projects and again meet new people. During your studies it's beneficial to get some kind of internship or side job or being a volunteer at some kind of organization even if you don't get paid it's also good like to be a part of some kind of thing because you meet so many new people to be honest when i was a volunteer at a non-profit organization i had so much fun i made new friends i met so many new people that i would have never met if i didn't join this organization it just was so cool and it was a great way to get away from your studies and to think about something else okay guys thank you very much for watching my video and being with me all these minutes i appreciate it very much if you like this video please like it and comment down below if you have any kind of comments i will be happy to read your comments and uh, subscribe to my channel next week i'm gonna upload part two of this video and i think it will also be useful for you so yeah 
thank you for watching and uh, see you next time